or making up horror stories, how do you even function in a reality like that? And how do you compete with reality? And I'm not just talking about this reality. I'm talking about, if you read the newspapers, you know, there's a piece in the paper today about how in 2048 there will be no more seafood, right? Because we will have killed it all. How do you, how do you, I mean, how does imagination, and particularly sort of fantastic imagination, function in a reality that has, in many ways, gone beyond the realm of fantastic imagination? I'm like a kid. I retreat to my imagination. And I think probably a lot of you are the same, the same thing. I mean, I retreat to my books and I, I retreat to my study and I make things up. I'm plugged into the world as much as I have to be. Um, and I try really hard to stay committed. Um, I, I'm part of Move On dot com and, and like that and uh, I'm probably on God knows who many how many lists and that sort of thing. But, yeah, and I don't want to say I'm paranoid, but I hear clicks on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> but I've solved this problem because when I'm in private, I wear tinfoil on my head. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the reality is catching up with the worst of the, the horror stories and the global warming and all the rest of it and, and the politics has gotten scary, the rogue nukes and uh, you just cross your fingers and hope things will go on another day, that's all. Well, I want to go and start, I want to ask you about the apocalypse has been around <laughs> Looking over our, our heads for a long time, I would say ever since uh, the Berlin, yeah, I mean the Cuban Missile Crisis, really, uh, we've all been pretty much, and in the last, we actually did have a short period of sunshine when the Berlin Wall came around, and then, and I guess now we're going to build a new one, aren't we, between the United States and Mexico. Um, I wanted to ask you about the new book. You, it, it comes billed as a departure. I'm not sure as a reader that I see it so much as a departure, but I'm curious whether the whether you think of it as a departure in any way, and if so, in what way? I mean, just sort of where, where it comes from and how you see it fitting in the, the, the line of your work. I felt like it went deeper um, than some of the other books, but it's never something that you set out to do. I think unless you decide to try something entirely new. And for me, that's never exactly worked. I mean, I've been able to try doing any number of things within the guise of my genre, so to speak. And I'm comfortable there. Uh, needful Things is kind of a consumer satire, and desperation is sort of a meditation on Christianity and God and uh, what it's like to spend 40 days in the desert. It's an Old Testament deal. But I think any writer's in trouble if he sits down at his uh, word processor and says, now I'm going to depart right. <laughs> from what I've done before. You, you put yourself immediately behind the eight ball because you are what you are, and you can't change what you are. Right. Uh, one of the interesting things to me about the book is that in the, in the author's note at the end, you talk about um, your old professor at the University of Maine and his notion of um, the story pool or the myth pool. Right. I don't want to give anything away for people who haven't read the book, but we'll give a little bit away. Um, I, and that becomes a, a big part of the book. They're all just real. Right. And there are also other references to writers you like, lines that you grab from writers or ideas or half 